Now, I want to do a video on this program that probably got beat up on the playground when it was a kid because it has a stupid, unpronounceable name. Um, but it has changed my life in the past two days. That's sort of an, a hyperbole, but I have decided to switch to this program full time for my image viewing, not just because it's a good image viewer, but because it has all these crazy features in it that just make it, you can run custom commands on images, you can do pretty much whatever you want, highly extensible. Now it's called Simple X Image Viewer or SXIV. I'm gonna misspell that every single time that I write it, but that's what it is. Now the manual, which is a lie by the way, the manual says SXIV is a simple image viewer for X. It only has the most basic features required for fast image viewing. That isn't true. This program has everything. Or the things it doesn't have, you can easily put into it. So it's a fantastic image viewer. I was using Fab before, which is very minimalist too, but this this viewer is much more extensible. I'll, ex I'll explain why, why in a little bit, but I'll go over some of the basic features in the first couple minutes just to make sure everyone's on the same page. So I'm going to go to my... Uh, wallpapers folder one of my wallpapers folders and I have lots and lots of wallpapers here so if you want to run SXIV you have to spell it correctly first that's the hard part and pretty much run it on an image and it will pull it up let me move this to another um, workspace so base basic bindings plus to zoom in minus to zoom out equal to get to 100% zoom uh, let's say you're zoomed in want to move around you can use vim keys H uh, H, J, K, L, stuff like that, or capital H, J, K, L to zoom to one side or the other. W fits it to the window. Uh, e and capital E, I think, fit it by its width and height or something like that. Yeah. And it just has a bunch of other bindings to do, I you know, flip things around and stuff like that. Like, for example, angle brackets will rotate it by 50 degrees. Now this isn't actually changing the image, it's just changing how it's displayed, but you can do that. And I think that uh, question mark is, yeah, flip it uh, upside down. And additionally, I think I wrote it down. Oh yeah, so pipe. Pipe is actually invert the image, so you can do that as well. And uh, underscore to invert it on the other axis. So you can do a whole lot. This is just the basic stuff. Um, now one advantage that SXIV has over FE or other minimalist image uh, programs, I guess, is that it can in fact render GIFs. So for example, I have a GIF in my uh, directory here and I can open this up, here's my GIF. And if I wanna play it, I can just press control and then space or hold down control and press space and it will animate. I can pause the animation with control space or if I want it to just automate automatically, I can give it the A option and that will pop up like that. So that, that's very nice, but let's get into some deeper features. Um, it's still like level two, not the deepest features, but um, one thing that you can do is uh, SXIV comes with a thumbnail mode. So for example, if I run this on, uh, well, even aside from that, it can open multiple files at one time. So if I, oops, let me get rid of my face here, you'll see that down here, there's a little thing that says one out of 435. That's how I've, if I've opened all these images, all 435 of them, they're all in here. So if I want to go to the next one, I can press in or P to go back. So it's just next and previous, or you can press enter and that will go into a thumbnail mode where you can move around with HJKL, uh, move up with lowercase g down with uh, capital G, etc. And you can select an image to view it or something like that. Let me actually zoom into a good. Um, so that is very nice. Or if you want, you can, for example, start it out in this thumbnail mode by giving it the T option and it will automatically have all, you know, all the thumbnails out here. Or you can give it with the, uh, someone is calling me right now. Okay, surprise, it wasn't important. Um, or you can give it the F option and that'll actually start it in full screen. So if you wanna just automatically get some full screen image thumbnail viewer, it's very easy to do. Now here's where things get interesting because all of this, these are nice features, but they're not really how you can extend the program. One nice thing about it though, is that there is a file, I forgot the name, but it is config slash S sxiv slash exec slash key handler and this is a script that uh, well basically you can run external commands from sxiv um, and so the script I, I think there's an example of it on the on the arch wiki if you want to check that out but i've i've changed it to my own specifications so what you can do here is um, 
there's a binding in SXIV, which is control uh, X. Let me actually move this. Con so once you press control X, then you can press another key and it will run a particular script depending on what key you give it. So if I press control X and then W, it'll run this. Um, or control X and then R, it'll do this, et cetera, et cetera. So you can change this to your own specifications. Uh, but let me show you some of the things I did. So for example, uh, one thing you might want to do in your image viewer is make things your wallpaper. So let's say I really like this image right here. Um, one thing I can do is press control X and now W, and you'll see that my wallpaper has now changed. All that it's done is it has just run these commands. It's just you know, these are my wall, change wallpaper commands, basically. And it even, I had it give a little notification up in the top right if you saw it. So that's one thing. Another thing that I found extremely useful, now if you know my system, I have this nice little, um, let's set 11 Qubit just to see what it looks like. Um, I have a little bookmark file where I keep some important directories along with shortcuts for them. So I realize I can use this. What I can do is, I can pipe these important directory names to D menu to give me a menu, and then I can select uh, a folder to move a file to or copy a file to. So just as an example, if you want to select multiple files while you're in thumbnail mode, or actually you don't have to be in thumbnail mode, but how you do it is press M. So if I go to these files I like and press M, notice that it's adding this little white square to the bottom. So I'm selecting these uh, five images. So now what I can do is, what, I, what I've had this script do is give me a dmenu menu of those important directories and then copy the files I have selected there. So what I can do is press control X and then C and then I'll say I want to move them to my home directory and it will move them all there. So if I go to my home directory and LS, you will see that all of these files are now there. That's exactly what I wanted. Or I also have the same thing but for moving uh, so, I mean, the previous one was copying, this is moving. Very easy to do, pretty much the same stuff. Um, although note, uh, you do, since you are looping through for, I mean, the way I've written it here is it's looping through each and every file. So you have to make sure that, you know, it's not asking for the directory multiple times. So that's why I do this. But anyway, it's not important. Now I mentioned before, you can uh, flip superficially an image with uh, angle brackets. So you can press angle brackets to do that. But if you want to eternally flip an image, let's say I want to eternally flip this image here. Um, what I can do is, well, the shortcut I've set up is control X and then one of the R buttons. So R for clockwise, capital R for counterclockwise. So I pre if I press control X and then R, that has now been eternally switched or control X then R, etc. Um, and I can just keep going around, but this is actually changing the image. Um, additionally, let's see what else I have here. Oh yeah, also copying the file name to clipboard. So if I do control X and then Y, it will copy the file name or control X and then capital Y and it'll copy the entire path. So that can be useful as well. Uh, let's see. Oh, and then I have a little delete option as well. Let's just delete this since, cause why not? Just gives me a little D menu prompt. Do you want to delete it? I'll say yes, and it's gone. And I will say when you do do modifications on images that you have open in SXIV, it's usually pretty good at updating whenever there are changes. So that is one advantage it has over particular programs out there, but that's, that's just um, another thing. Now, one other additional thing I want to add, just because it's super useful, I just haven't thought of a potential use for it. Um, and that is, you can actually use SXIV as a kind of, I guess, D menu for images. And what I mean by that is you can allow it to take a read standard input and write to standard output. What I mean by that is if you run it with SXIV, let's give it the, um, I'll give it the thumbnail option, I'll also give it the input option and output option. Actually, I'll just write them all together. Um, so what I can do is, let's say I pipe all of my images into SXIV, and uh, I'm just, well, I'll just do it this way. So what happens is, again, I can press M to select different images. So let's say I want to select one, two, three, four, five images. Now I'm going to quit, and you'll see what happens is, since we give it the output option, it actually mm, outputs those file names to standard output. Now, 
that is extremely, I mean, again, it's sort of like a D menu for images. You can have a user select images and then you can use those and pipe those to a new script and do something on them. I haven't thought of a particular use for this yet, but I just know that it's very useful because of this. So this is an option. I'm sure someone will have some idea for it, but you can easily use it as a way to, you know, give the, yourself or another user the ability to manually choose images to operate on. So that is very, very convenient. Anyway, that's about it. As I, as I said, there's one that, well, I should say this image viewer, I've switched to it full time. Um, I used to use Fed, now I use SXIV. But there's one thing that I don't know how to do in SXIV. I don't know if it can do it, and that is Fed can set backgrounds. You can just give it a particular option and it will it can set your background. Now I still have Fet installed because I don't know how to replicate this in SXIV. If anyone knows, please tell me. Or if it's in the manual and I just didn't notice it, please tell me. But uh, that's one thing, that's the only reason I still have Fet installed because I still use it for that. But in terms of image viewing, um, yeah, this, this really, uh, I, you know, there are some videos out there on them that sort of show the um, basic things you can do with it, but the ability to run commands on images just really, uh, yeah, that really steals the day for me. So anyway, hope you enjoy it. hope you learned something, and I hope you enjoy using SXIV.